are here to become doctors. Do you know what it has taken to make your dream come true? The story of St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences is rooted in the story of the medical college. Ours is a legacy to educate doctors, nurses and paramedical healthcare personnel to be dedicated, competent, ethical, holistic and humane, sensitive to serving those most in need. St. John's is more than an institution. To some, it is a world-class medical college, counted as one of the best in the nation. To others, a state-of-the-art 2,000-bed hospital with a multitude of medical, surgical and super-speciality departments. Still others know it to be a top-class college of nursing. And a few know it to be a research institute the first and only autonomous institute in a medical college with a biorepository and IAEA permitted nuclear isotope lab. Our Institute of Healthcare Management and Paramedical Studies is yet another entity that exists on campus. Since its inception, St. John's has been guided by its vision of a world where quality healthcare is accessible and affordable even to the poorest. This is reinforced by a mission of education and empowerment of healthcare personnel committed to serve, especially the underserved, with integrity and compassion in the spirit of Christ. What you see and experience today did not happen overnight. It goes back to a little over a century. The Catholic Medical College we know as St. John's is the fruit of a seed sown in 1909. Dr. Agnes McLaren, a Scotswoman who at 72 years of age set up the St. Catherine's Hospital in Rawalpindi in 1909 to care for suffering Indian women. Inspired by Agnes McLaren, Mary Glovery and Anna Dengel became missionary doctors in India. Mary Glovery suggested the creation of a Catholic medical college that would be distinguished by its values, ethics and commitment to service. These pioneers helped lay the foundation for St. John's. When the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India was constituted in 1944, Archbishop Thomas Potakamuri communicated the vision of a Catholic medical college to the conference. His Holiness Pope John XXIII in 1958 agreed to the college being named after his patron, St. John the Baptist, as a mark of his personal interest and approval of the college's aims and ideals. With a view to get the initiative off the ground, the Archbishop Louis Matthias's planning committee, appointed by Cardinal Gracious, formulated a plan for the creation of a Catholic medical college. The Church in India worked with the German Catholic Bishops' Organization for Development and Cooperation, Miserior, that contributed most finances for the medical college and hostels. While the battle for funding was ongoing, the location of the college was among issues that Archbishop Matthias addressed in his report to the Catholic hierarchy on March 1st of 1959. The consensus of the bishops favoured Bangalore for the location of the college. In 1960, Cardinal Valerian Gracious and Archbishop Thomas Potokamuri identified and purchased the land on which the institution stands today. The cornerstone of the college building was blessed by Pope Paul VI on 3rd December 1964 during the 38th Eucharistic Congress in Bombay. On the 27th of June 1965, the cornerstone of the college was laid by the then Governor of Mysore, his Excellency V. V. Giri, in the presence of Cardinal Valerian Gracious and Mrs. Indira Gandhi, 
the then Minister for Information and Broadcasting. But before this happened... On 8th July 1963, St. John's Medical College opened its doors to the first batch of 50 medical students at its temporary site in St. Mary's Orphanage and Industrial Institute at Cooktown in Bangalore. St. Mary's Orphanage was directly under the administration of Archbishop Thomas Pothakamuri and it was his direct intervention that led to the use of this institution as the first home for the college. The makeshift medical college was cramped but the atmosphere was heartwarming. A temporary structure constructed out of bamboo and brick served as the hostel and was nicknamed Booth Bangla. The bungalow of ghosts on account of the frequent invasion of unwelcome creatures. Though the early beginnings of St. John's were humble, it was the determination and vision of Cardinal Valerian Gracious, Archbishop Louis Matthias and Archbishop Thomas Pothakamuri, along with the Catholic bishops and church in India that saw the project of the Catholic Medical College through. It took the dedication and strength of Dean Louis Montero, Administrator Mr. Willie Saldana and Father Frank Lush, Chair of the Construction Committee, the pillars on which the foundations of St. John's Medical College were laid. Students moved into the new hostel facilities in June of 1967. Cardinal Valerian Gracious dedicated the new college building on Sunday 29th September 1968, just as the first batch of students entered their final year. The occasion was presided over by His Excellency Dr. Zakir Hussain, President of India. Between 1965 and 1983, St. Martha's Hospital provided vital clinical training to about 800 medical graduates. 550 men, 150 women, and 100 religious sisters from various congregations. In September 1968, Senator John McCormick, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, expressed USAID's willingness to fund the construction of a 500-bed hospital and ancillary buildings. The USAID grant was executed in June 1969 and provided money for the construction of the hospital. On 3rd August 1971, the cornerstone of the new hospital was blessed by His Eminence Cardinal Parikattil and laid by His Excellency Dharmavira, Governor of Mysore, in the presence of His Excellency Kenneth Keating, Ambassador for the USA in India. On the same occasion, the ambassador unveiled a bust of Pope John XXIII in the foyer of the college. Bishop Jonas Thaliath played a crucial role in ensuring the financial stability of St. John's. The new teaching hospital was commissioned on 8th December 1975 and the outpatient block was named after Senator John McCormick. The final shift from St. Martha's Hospital to St. John's Medical College Hospital took place in 1983. St. John's Medical College, St. John's Medical College Hospital, St. John's Research Institute, St. John's College of Nursing and St. John's Institute of Health Management and Paramedical Studies came under the St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences in 1994. In 2013, St. John's entered a phase of expansion and renovation that is ongoing. The medical and nursing colleges, hostels and hospital have been upgraded and enhanced with top-of-the-line equipment and facilities. The increase in the undergraduate and postgraduate seats mandated this expansion, as did community teaching and treatment expectations. The core values that define the ethos of St. John's are integrity, compassion and excellence. 
usually referred to by the acronym ICE. We have NABL accredited laboratories and NABH accredited hospital. 23 renovated state of the art operation theaters, expanded intensive care units and an exclusive emergency medicine block have been commissioned. We continue to expand our capabilities with a new nuclear medicine department and an integrated laboratory services system. St. John's continues to draw patients because it has earned the public's trust for its ethical, honest and quality care at reasonable cost. The hospital currently handles around 2,500 patients in the OPD and over 150 admissions per day. Patient satisfaction and compassionate, holistic care are our drivers. St. John's doesn't dive into new technology immediately, but St. John's adopts technology depending upon patient and societal expectations. From its inception, St. John's Medical College has been a truly national medical college, drawing faculty and students from all across the country. What makes the medical college unique are its teaching methods that have always been ahead of their time. So as you know, we started with 50 seats and in 1967 we went to 60 seats. It's only in 2016 we went to 150 seats. And uh, the reason we felt 150 seats is because we had the infrastructure and the faculty for 150 seats. And uh, the community is growing and we thought we should give opportunities for more people to study in St. John's. As far as postgraduate seats are concerned, the number of postgraduates has increased from just about 10 to 15 to about 130. But that's purely because of the number of specialities that the college is offering today. Our present student to teacher ratio for the undergraduates is 2 is to 1, but for postgraduates it's probably even close to 1 is to 1. Our postgraduate outcomes to make our postgraduates competent doctors capable of practicing independently in their area of expertise. We also train them in medical education and also sensitize them to research and encourage them to do research so that those who want to go into medical education, those who want to go into research are equipped to be able to take that on also. The medical college has been uh, rated among the top medical colleges in the country. If you were to consider private medical colleges, we are among the top five. With this kind of a high visibility at the national level, it is no surprise that we draw a lot of students to St. John's. We are the only medical college that has seven Rhodes Scholars to our credit. In response to the demand for nursing staff, St. John's School of Nursing was started in July 1980. In September 1989, it was raised to the status of a College of Nursing and new courses in Basic BSc Nursing and Post-Certificate BSc Nursing were included. In 1996, the Nursing College added an MSc in Medical Surgical Nursing and Community Health. Over 4,500 nurses would have graduated from the nursing college at the end of 2023. Students are taught and trained through simulation labs before being posted to the clinical setting for practical exposure. The hospital serves as an excellent clinical field for the students' practical training. The key criterion, I would say, goes in line with the mission of St. John's that it caters to the underprivileged students. Integrated nursing approach was started in the year 2013 with a lot of groundwork and efforts put in by our uh, pioneers in our college and the hospital and it was mainly to bridge the gap between education and practice so that the, it is for the benefit of the students as well as for quality patient care. My experience has been quite enriching. St. John's College of Nursing provides an atmosphere for an all-round development of the student, be it through academic, extracurricular and spiritual related activities. Our teachers, if I remember, have molded us in every way. 
even though our schedules were hectic busy we see that we kept pushing ourselves and today we see the fruits of our labor allied health professionals are essential to the healthcare system they assist facilitate and complement the work of physicians the allied health science courses at st john's are run as a stream of the medical college In 1974 we started the medical laboratory technology a diploma course with 10 student intake currently we have an intake of more than 200 students for the seven undergraduate courses and five postgraduate courses and the masters program include the masters in medical laboratory technology as well as physiotherapy we use the resources of the medical college for the training of these people all the faculty of the pre para as well as the clinical uh, faculty are involved in teaching these students st john's started its medical education unit in 1991 as a think tank to improve and innovate teaching when a medical education unit was mandated by the medical council of india in 2009 st john's became a regional center and in 2014 was elevated to a nodal hub members of the teaching faculty have taken leadership positions in national fora that have crafted policy in the field we presently in our country there are more than 600 medical colleges and st john's the department of medical education is certainly in the top 10 we are one of the 10 nodal centers for faculty development that is set up by the medical council of india of course in addition to this we conduct several other trainings some of them are very unique in fact we've designed one training specifically focused on sister doctors working in the rural area and how they can manage their emergencies in a resource constrained settings a faculty development program uh, is known in other places as well and uh, we have been invited to conduct trainings and set up medical education unit in kenya Nigeria and Zimbabwe and we've done that as well we've also provided support for uh, the HIV AIDS training in Myanmar uh, through the WHO and these are some of the sort of international or other uh, training program that we've conducted in the other countries to safeguard the rights safety and well-being of human subjects involved in biomedical research the institutional ethics committee was established in the year 2000 to ensure all research activities carried out by faculty and students of SJNAHS meet the national and international ethical standards an independent hospital ethics committee oversees ethical practices in patient care since 1963 we have a very active ethics teaching which has been going on and in 1984 when father kalam came he modified the ethics program so that it become structured and it exists from the first year to the final year so in 2014 we organized that fifth national bioethics conference in bangalore and in 2018 we heard and organized that world bioethics congress and also the sixth national bioethics congress in bangalore so we have a long tradition of teaching and practicing medical ethics categorically we do not discriminate against any patient based on anything only if there is a medical indication do we isolate the patient okay. and classical example is dealing with hiv and aids it appeared in 1980s 8 and the college hospital at that time itself decided that they will not discriminate against any patient patients were treated in general wards with ordinary patients staying next to them and this was appreciated by the study conducted by tata institute of social sciences where they called as one of the one of the only institutions that had non discriminatory practices in the country the goal of sjmc's mentoring program is to provide a safe environment for students encourage and foster reflection promote self care and wellness guide personal development enhance team building and problem solving skills and assist in career exploration The mentorship program is really amazing. It provides an informal platform for staff and students to get to know one another better. Our homes are always open for students to students or our wards to drop in for whatever reason. 
and this was a time when we really got to know them to appreciate them and to respect them the college also provided programs like the college day the campus day the sports day which helped us to get to know the students and really integrate as staff and students as one great family in St. John's. This place will always be special. It is here that we found a family away from home. We found friends, mentors, teachers, people who picked us up when we fell, embraced us when we cried, and celebrated with us in our triumphs. We have made countless memories in this beautiful place. A student of St. John's has a robust, well-rounded development. It's not just academics, extracurricular activities, cultural events, sports meets and tournaments are a big part of life. To join the college made you part of a family that binds the alumni to each other, not just for the years in college, but forever, regardless of where they are. St. John's provides holistic education in a very conducive atmosphere encouraging our students not only in academics but also in sports and cultural activities making him a well-rounded person and thus making him a man for all seasons a compassionate and humane doctor the hostel was not just a roof over our head and we have made fond memories of the time spent in mess and not just eating but planning the next big event. Everything has to have a grand outcome. And our annual intercollegiate cultural fest with Al the Culture Vulture as our mascot is renowned across India. Eight years in St. John's Hostel was bliss. It was heaven. It was a wonderful place growing up as a medical student. I remember my room, my cozy room. I remember the sports field where you'd walk, you'd run, you'd play athletics. You'd even play hockey on our field, including being on the B team. Basketball on the clay courts, and now we have basketball on a cement court. We have grown. It's been a wonderful time. I feel privileged to have studied in this great institution that has laid the foundation for my career, given me values for my fellow human beings and friends for life. It is a matter of great pride and honor to do one's post-graduation in one of the best medical colleges in India. The institution has received uh, support from the alumni in so many different ways actually. And one example, notable example that I can think of in relation to medical education has been the funding of, uh, for the setting up of the skills lab and the simulation center. And uh, this is a centre that's come up uh, wonderfully and we're extremely proud of this centre at St. John's. I always feel that uh, the doctor-sister alumni who work in the rural, underserved areas of the country require support. And I think alumni should take a break, a holiday and visit them. It's not financial and technical support that they require. It is just a visit from an alumni to say that they are doing great work you will go a long way because St. John's has not produced doctors, but St. John's has produced people for society, for the world, and people who will outshine the others in every sphere, not just as doctors, but as human beings. The Unit of Hope, the St. John's Center for Children with Special Needs, represents how St. John's responds to the societal gap in treating the less privileged. Unit of Hope was started by a multidisciplinary team of professionals for children with development disorders and disabilities from birth to 18 years of age. The Unit of Hope was started in 2004 by a few doctors. The aim of which was to provide multidisciplinary holistic care for children with special needs. The emphasis was not only on curative, but also on providing rehabilitation, preventive services, and also early detection services. I would like to thank CBM, that is the Christopher Blinden Mission, for helping us initiate the program. And of course, the continued and wholehearted support of the institution. There are very few comprehensive multidisciplinary centers 
which provide care for special needs children in the country especially those associated with medical colleges or academic institutions there may be a few in the private sector but there are not many in in the medical college setup and i think this is something very unique about this institution st john's has a robust and experienced disaster relief and training unit that has been at the forefront of relief services for every calamity since 1971 The disaster relief unit team has worked alongside various organizations including the Community Health Cell, CHAI, Action Aid, India Today Foundation, Médecins Sans Frontières and even the Indian military. Our first experience of disaster response was in 1971. 20 years later in 1991 it became a very spontaneous and natural response by St John's and we responded to nearly every national disaster our country has faced the most important aspect about disaster response by St John's was the ability to volunteer spontaneously we've had volunteers from across the institution within 48 hours responding to a call to volunteer We are certainly proud of this response. St John's set a shining example in fulfilling its motto of serving the underserved and responding to most in need. The institution established the first dedicated COVID ER and set aside over 700 beds for care of COVID patients, including 38 ICU beds. for the severely ill at the peak of the crisis there were over 145 patients on ventilators and over 1000 in patients the response across the institution the community and the alumni was amazing the covid initiative is an example of how powerful alumni can be if they are engaged well the alumni association in collaboration with st john's administration got the support of 6 decades of alumni the alumni association coordinated a massive drive to provide refreshments for several months to all the frontline workers in the hospital some of these refreshments were homemade and even children volunteered in this initiative to help one must remember that we were unique because we made our own ppes we made our own sterilium and that was unusual because we spread this information to other institutions across the country St John's was one of the few institutes which mandated rural service for its MBBS graduates decades before it became a government policy thousands of St John's medical graduates have served their two year rural social obligation service of these over 600 are sister doctor alumni who continue to serve in remote rural areas of the country and i still remember at that time we had only 60 students for medicine uh 50% of them men 50% women and uh, i increased the number of sister students religious sister students a little more than before they were only taking 5 out of 60 i made it 15 so that uh, today we have the joy of seeing hundreds of our medical students sisters working in different rural areas in india uh, very few of them have gone abroad most of them are living in the uh, in the villages in our country which is a great joy for st john's the department of community health focuses on the holistic teaching of community medicine and public health the department of community health has more than 60 years of experience in the field in the initial years we focused on maternal and child health and are now focusing more on geriatric medicine along the way we've done work with community eye health deafness prevention and also looked at community mental health occupational health has always been a focus for the past 50 years the research institute is fruit of forward thinking that research would be the backbone for the future with cbci support the st john's research institute was created to approach lifestyle related disorders 
infectious diseases and cancer in India through basic and clinical research, promotion of evidence-based healthcare and population health research initiatives. St. John's Research Institute was not just about doing the research. It was about building people. It was about building a place on this campus where free thought could occur. I think it achieved all that. From the viewpoint of policy, it has actually changed policy around the world. At least the research it does has changed policy. For example, some of the research done on amino acid requirements has been the primary evidence that the WHO used to change how proteins should be eaten by humans. And that has had a major impact, not just on clinical practice, but on public health, as well as on food production and agricultural policy. There have been several milestones across all units of the institution. The needs of the community have grown and St. John's will continue to focus on meeting its vision to make quality healthcare accessible to the poorest. St. John's has changed and will change going forward also, depending upon the changes that happen in medicine, the changes that happen to improve our academic excellence and the changes that are demanded because of the changes in the community. So St. John's will always be a work in progress, striving for academic excellence and excellence in patient care. We will continue to change with time and strive to excel always with integrity and compassion.